It's the 1920s in San Francisco. A bold idea occurs, a bridge over the Golden Gate Strait. But it seems impossible. The strait is vast, the water is turbulent, the winds unforgiving. And the technology, well, it's limited. Yet against all odds, the impossible dream becomes reality. The iconic Golden Gate Bridge stands tall, but how? Today, we unveil the epic tale of how a city divides nature, technology, and doubt to build a world wonder. The Golden Gate Strait was a big problem for the people of San Francisco back in the 1920s. It's a mile wide and the waters are rough and deep. Ferries were the only way to get across, but as more people got cars, those ferries got packed. By 1929, over 2.5 million car trips were made by ferry each year. The city needed a bridge, but building one seemed impossible. Joseph Strauss, a famous bridge engineer, was brought in to see if it could be done. He was known for being hard to work with, and his first design for the bridge wasn't liked. It wasn't until Leon Moisef, Irving Morrow, and Charles Alton Ellis joined him that a design everyone loved came to life. But having a design didn't mean the bridge would be built easily. The ferry company, Southern Pacific Railroad, didn't want to lose business. They started over 2,300 legal fights to try and stop the bridge from being built. The Department of War was worried too. If war broke out, enemy planes could bomb the bridge. Navy ships could get trapped in the bay. There were also fears about ships crashing into the bridge in the fog. The department even wanted the bridge painted black and yellow so it was easy to see. But San Francisco didn't give up. The financial crash hit and money was tight but the city found a way. A bond measure using citizens' properties as security was proposed. People were nervous but in the end voted to go ahead with it. The bond plus a credit line from the Bank of America's founder meant construction could start. The total cost? $35 million. It was a big price back then, but one the city was willing to pay. It took until 1971 to pay off the debt. Now, with money and a design, the bridge's future was looking up, but building it would bring new challenges no one had faced before. Building the Golden Gate Bridge wasn't going to be easy. It all started in January 1933. The towers were the first challenge. Each is 746 feet tall and weighs 22,000 metric tons. That's a lot of steel standing high above the bay, carrying the entire weight of the bridge. The construction began with North Tower on land in Marin County. That part was straightforward, but the South Tower out in the waters of the Strait was a whole different story. Workers first made a temporary pier stretching 1,100 feet into the ocean to build the South Tower. Mother Nature and foggy conditions didn't make it easy. A storm and a streamer ship blinded in the fog destroyed the pier. Not once, but twice. But the crew pressed on. They dropped bombs to break up the rock under the seabed. It was a sight to see, with seagulls swarming overhead to catch stunned fish floating to the surface. After that, they dredged the area and poured the first batch of underwater concrete. Back on land, massive concrete anchorages were taking shape on both sides of the strait. So much concrete was poured that they had to set a mixing plant right on the site. With the southern footing ready, up went the steel south tower. It was a moment of triumph, a tangible testament that yes, the impossible was becoming possible. Step by step, with steel, concrete, and unwavering determination, a bridge that was once a distant dream started to reach across the formidable Golden Gate Strait. Things were moving. The towers were up, and it was time for the wires. But first, shipping lanes were closed. A Coast Guard vessel dragged the first wires across the bay. Cranes lifted them into giant cradles on top of the towers. Next came a working platform slid across the bay. The real challenge began, stringing thousands of wires back and forth to form the bridge's backbone. Workers braved 45 mile per hour winds high above the waters, their hands skillfully weaving the bridge's lifelines. In one remarkable shift, a team spun 1,000 miles of wire across the strait. The cables weren't just one big piece. No, they were made up of 27,572 individual wires. 
put them end to end, and they stretch 80,000 miles, enough to wrap around the entire Earth three times. These wires were tightened at each end, forming two main cables as wide as three feet in diameter. Beneath these steel giants, wooden pallets created the catwalk. Workers moved along, weaving, compacting, and bonding the wires. Each strand, each twist of the wire, brought the dream closer to reality. The workers painted the wires to seal them from the weather. Above the challenging waters of the Golden Gate Strait, amidst the winds and the fog, a bridge was taking shape wire by wire, strand by strand. With the main cables set and sturdy, it was time to build the road. Smaller cables hung down from the big winds, reaching towards the water. Steel trusses were attached, creating a frame for the concrete road. Workers high above the water faced the constant risk of falling. A fall from that height with speeds hitting 75 miles per hour was usually deadly, yet innovation was at hand. A safety net, a groundbreaking idea at the time, was installed below. It was a lifesaver, literally. Workers who fell were caught by the net and spared from the deadly plunge. They joined the Halfway to Hell Club, a testament to their narrow escape. But in February 1937, a dark day arrived. A paving machine toppled, carrying workers with it into the safety net. But this time, the net gave way under the weight. Ten lives were lost to the waters below. The tragedy echoed the risk and the sacrifice embedded in every inch of the bridge. Yet amidst the dangers, the dream of bridging the Golden Gate straight endured. Every cable, truss, and pour of concrete was a tribute to resilience and those who dared to build the impossible. In the shadow of the Great Depression, jobs were scarce. Yet amidst the economic gloom, the Golden Gate Bridge stood as a beacon of employment. It wasn't just a construction site, it was a lifeline for many. The job was dangerous, but desperation made the risk worth taking. Some unemployment folks even watched the site, ready to step in if a worker fell and a job opened up. Every piece of steel that rose against the backdrop of the bay brought another pressing question to light. What color should grace this marvel of engineering? As debate swirled, an unexpected hero emerged, the bridge's orange steel primer. It wasn't just eye-catching. It met the Department of War's need for visibility. This shade, known as International Orange, would go on to color not just the bridge but also NASA's astronauts and American footballs. Time flew and challenges were met with unwavering resolve. Four years after the first steel kissed the sky and after securing 600,000 steel rivets, the bridge was ready to embrace the world. On May 27, 1937, pedestrians got their first stroll. The next day, cars rode across, marking the bridge's grand opening. Fast forward to the 50th anniversary in 1987. Excitement bubbled over and crowds poured onto the bridge to celebrate. But excitement turned to alarm as the bridge swayed, deflecting 10 feet under the weight of the crowd. It was a close call, a reminder of the bridge's might and vulnerability. Since its grand opening, the Golden Gate Bridge attracted over 2 billion cars across its span. It's not just a bridge, but an American icon, a symbol intertwined with the identity of San Francisco. With such fame comes great responsibility. Security tightened, especially in the years following 9-11, ensuring this symbol of American resilience remains protected. But there's another silent challenge, earthquakes. Nestled between the San Andreas and Hayward fault lines, the bridge faces the constant threat of tremors. But just as it was built with determination, it's maintained with innovation. Technologies have advanced since the 1930s. With them, our ability to shield the bridge from nature's unpredictable shakes. Energy dissipating devices, a modern marvel, have been installed. They're subtle yet powerful, ready to absorb the Earth's energy should the ground sway. The towers that mark the approach ramps have been completely replaced, fortified against the tremors that the fault lines might unleash. The Golden Gate isn't just maintained, it's nurtured. Every bolt checked, every cable inspected, to ensure it stands not just as a passage for cars, but as a passage through history, a silent witness to the ever-evolving tale of San Francisco and America. The Golden Gate Bridge is always alive with activity, not just with the hum of traffic, but with the dedicated hands of 110 full-time personnel. 
Painting isn't just about keeping the bridge looking iconic. It's a shield, a defense against corrosion. Each stroke is informed by meticulous monitoring with specific areas prioritized to keep the structure solid and resilient. Need a new part? There's no heading to the store. Instead, an on-site steel fabrication shop stands ready, where skilled hands craft the needed components precisely. The bridge has seen its share of makeovers. In the 1970s, every single suspension rope was replaced. Come the 1980s, a new road deck was laid, lighter and stronger, a testament to the advances in steel technology. 80 years have passed since the Golden Gate Bridge first graced the San Francisco Bay, yet its significance hasn't waned. Every cable, every rivet, every gust of wind that passes through its towers tells a story. It's a story of human determination and ingenuity, a reminder of what we can achieve when audacity and skill join hands. Enjoyed the story of the Golden Gate Bridge? Hit like to journey through more marvels of construction with us.